Now with actor and director Andrew McCarthy, who you know from Pretty in Pink, Class, and more. Well, decades so ago, many more. so many more. I mean, Pretty in Pink, who didn't grow up with that? Well, decades <laughs> ago, he decided to walk hundreds of miles in northern Spain. He then took the trek again with his son, and he wrote a book about it called Walking with Sam. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate you. And you know, you walked hundreds of miles. That is a huge commitment. And you did it decades ago, but then you decided to do it again with your son. What was the difference the second time around? Well, the first time it really, it changed my life. You know, it changed my place in the world. I was a young, successful actor, and then mm. I didn't really know what was going on. So I went and walked across Spain, and it really changed my place in the world. And so my son, as he was cusping manhood, I thought it might be a good uh, thing for him, too, to sort of get his feet under him, literally. And, uh, and I wanted our relationship to kind of change and morph into an adult one as opposed to me telling a kid what to do, mm. you know, and it, um, it really had that effect. I, I, I loved, uh, you were talking about it, and I, I just want to read what you, you said. Um, I guess Sam said that it takes a while to see parents as real people, and that you believe that you really needed to sort of reframe the way you looked at him, to see him as his own guy. He's a different person than you were, and it really took this journey um, to, to do that, to give it to give it the space to see that he isn't you. Yeah, I think we do that as parents. We project ourselves onto our kids and our feelings. We they kind of look like us. They kind of behave like us. So they must be responding like us, and or feeling things that we do. And I really discovered that he's quite his own guy, you know. And for him to allow me to see him as opposed to just bolting out the door, yeah. and for you know for him to see me, you know, so we could gain a certain trust that uh, as adults, you know, when I left home at 17, I never really saw my dad again. That was the end of our relationship. And I didn't want that to happen with my kids. And so it was a way of just sort of putting a baseline under us. What a it, gift. Yeah. It was. It was it, a real gift for me. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, it's an amazing story and, and journey that you've had with your son. And you two, you were isolated. You were out in the, in the element for <laughs> weeks at a time. So what was that experience like? Well, it's not like you're on the Appalachian Trail where you've got your whole world on your back. I uh -huh. mean, you're, you're in society. You're walking through villages and towns and things. But uh, you are under blistering Spanish sun. And uh, it really plays with your mind a little bit. And you sort of are revealed to yourself, all your good points and bad, and his. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he sees mine. So, you know, that whole experience was, it was, it was just sort of revealing to us about who we were. You did have your cell phones. Hmm. Well, we did. But what was interesting about that is that they kind of, you know, some people go, no, we're not having any cell phones, nothing. And they just kind of receded and fell into their natural place. You know, at the beginning, we're checking our phones, but after a few weeks on the trail, you sort of, you're much more in sync with the earth and yourself, and that you're, uh, you go the whole day and you kind of go, oh, wait, I haven't looked at my phone. And That's so there was something great. really nice about getting a natural rhythm. You know, the walking rhythm is the natural rhythm that we should be moving and thinking at, really, and we've gotten so far away from it. You know, we default to that every five seconds, mm -hmm. you know? And so to sort of encounter yourself, along the way, you know, that's, there's a lot going on up there, emotionally and mm -hmm. mentally, that um, we avoid. And, and you probably so. learned so much about each other. I was reading from Flaming Hot Cheetos to, <laughs> no, uh, we know, did. relationships. We, we, really, uh, we, we did, we learned so much, we saw so much. And um, at the beginning, I was sort of guiding, and then we were walking together, sort of, and then by the end, he was sort of dragging me along. You know, the natural evolution of a lifetime was sort of condensed in 500 miles. And we, and we know, it, it's hard to believe, the movie, your movie Class, mm. 40 years. Yeah. 40 years ago. <laughs> I, it, it's unbelievable. And, and after all these decades, how did it feel for you to re reunite with other members of the Brat Pack, as yeah. they call them, and, and for the new documentary? Yeah, I, when, I, when I wrote this book about the Brat Pack a couple of years ago, I realized, I know what I felt now. What did, what did everybody else feel, you know? Because I hadn't ever talked to anybody about it. So I went back and looked up a bunch of the old gang, and I hadn't, like you said, I hadn't seen Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Demi Moore in 30-odd oh years. Gosh. And wow. realize how much affection we still, we had for each other now, in a way that maybe we didn't in youth when we were so young and competitive and scared, you know? But now we had so much, really, that was just the word, affection and fondness for each other and for our own youth, you know? And because we are these sort of avatars for a certain generation's youth. 100%. And, you know, yeah. we've come to represent that to people. Uh, for and us. plus, in real life, you do look the same. So not yeah. only are avatars, <laughs> but as Robin said, we all want your secret. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting. I was reading that you 
you didn't love the term Brat Pack when you were when it was first coined, mm. but now you get it and you understand that it really we who lived by your movies, it's such a term of affection. Oh, it is. It, it has become such an iconically affectionate term for you know a moment in pop culture for yeah. sure. And I'm more than the sum of my parts because I'm a member of the Brat Pack, you know. And but at, at the beginning, you're right. We we hated it. Who wants to be called a brat? Who wants to be put yeah. in a pack? You know. But um, it's amazing what time does. It's mm -hmm. 180 degree difference now with the Brat Pack. And it, it is a wonderfully sort of affectionate term. Well, we in our youth, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we thank you. Andrew, great to see you as always. So thank you so much. Wonderful. And yes, it is wonderful. And Walking with Sam is out tomorrow. Make sure you go get yourself a copy. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.